Hey everyone, I'm Dania, and today on My Frequency, we're joined by Kiran Gundi, and she's a grad student at Harvard. Also, she was professionally touring with MIA. Um, so first of all, I'm really interested in getting to know your background and how you started playing drums and what was your first memory about drums and music. Totally. I grew up in New York City and every summer I used to go to this summer camp in Maine. And it was a cool summer camp because they had all sorts of sports there and you get away from the city life and it, I met a lot of friends when I was there. But the thing is that every afternoon you have to go swim in this lake, you have to do an, a, a water sport. And the truth is that I had a fear of sharks. Now it's obviously completely irrational, but I was 11. So I hated having to do those water sports. So one time I remember I snuck off and in the theater of the camp, the head of the camp's drum set was in the corner. And I, no one was around, so I started playing. It's just hitting and like hoping for the best. And I was really small compared to the drum set, but it sort of worked out. And there was a maintenance man there, and he was actually sweeping. Uh, and he comes up to me, and I was like, oh, God, he's going to turn me in. He's going to send me back to the water. Instead, it turns out he was a drummer. So he started teaching me, puts down the broom, sits next to me. He's like, let me show you how it's done. Starts teaching me one, two, three, four on the hi-hat. And that whole summer, I used to just work with him every single day on trying to get better at the drums. And I think one of the most important memories that I have from that four week period, this was in 2001, was that every day I felt like I was getting better. And exactly what I put into the drums was exactly what got out of it. So for example, you know, when you're learning a language, yesterday you didn't know how to say hello in French, but today you know how to say hello. And tomorrow you know how to say hello, how are you? And for the rest of your life, you'll always know how to say hello, how are you in French. And it was just like that with the drums. Every new beat that I learned, it felt so empowering. And so that's what got interest, interest in that and you kept doing it and it built up the patience. Absolutely, you learn a lot of discipline and you learn patience. And the thing is that when you feel like what you put in is what you get out, it, it's something that inspires you to want to take that mentality to all other facets of your life. When you're learning a sport, when I'm now I'm at uh, business school at Harvard down the street, I'm almost uh, graduating in May with my MBA. And every day when you learn something new, you feel motivated to want to keep doing it. And that memory of how it worked with my drumming, I take it out of that context and put that into other things like academics. You had a bachelor's degree in mathematics. How do you think mathematics is like linked to music? I can absolutely talk about that. Math is linked to music in so many different ways. Um, I had been drumming my whole time at high school and when I showed up at Georgetown, which is not necessarily a music school, I knew that I had to pick a major. And I thought a lot about the things that I enjoy and what makes me happy. And I love mathematics for many similar reasons why I love drumming, which is that you basically have to work with a set of parameters to achieve an end. And in drumming, you think about what kind of sounds can I make and how can I assemble them together to create one concrete beat that I can give to the artist. And it's the same in math. It's like, what kind of tools and numbers can I employ to get to the final answer? Uh, so that was why I chose the math major. And in my last year, I did a really exciting project where I looked at how you can play a drum in its most efficient way. And there's something called Bessel functions, which are essentially studying waves in two dimensions. So a wave is usually like in one dimension, like a sound wave looks like this. Um, and when you have waves in two dimensions, they form concentric circles mm -hmm. because basically the waves are intersecting and now creating an X and Y plane. And when you imagine the top of a drum, imagine a snare drum, for example, it has a loose vibrating skin. And when you hit the drum in the center of, the, uh, of its skin, it starts sending out concentric circles that then hit the clamp on the edge of the rim of the drum and then come back. So you have this kind of effect. But what happens when you don't hit the drum right in the center? If you hit the drum slightly off center, what happens is the concentric circles start, but one side hits the rim sooner than the other side. So now this side is traveling back closer, this side is still traveling out, and you basically get dissonance because the waves are crashing into each other instead of perfectly expanding in and out. And when I learned that, I was like, oh my God, I have a mathematical way of proving why it is that since you know, childhood, I was taught to play the drum in the center of it. Mm -hmm. So that's one very physical uh, way that math is related to music. The second is obviously when you're counting. I remember when I was on the MIA tour and I was, on, I was touring, I was drumming for an artist named MIA all of 2013. That's and awesome. <laughs> it, it was really, really amazing to work with her. And when I was on the tour with her, there was one song called Born Free. Now you wouldn't notice it, but in the track, the 
to the tempos between the chorus and the verse change slightly. And in order to get that right, I remember mapping out exactly what I think the tempo is for the one part and the tempo for the second part. And I had to figure out mathematically what was the most efficient way when I was drumming to do something, to play something in between those two to enable the switch to happen very organically. When you're in the studio, you just kind of throw things together and the computer figures it out for you. How does this work? Doesn't matter. Computer's got your back. But when you're doing the live drum and you have to sit there and be like, oh my God, if I'm off the tempo, I throw the whole concert off. So those are sort of the two main ways that uh, music and math, I think, are interrelated. Could you please tell me about your experiences that you had while you were touring with MIA and also what you've learned? Absolutely. Um, I would say there's two really amazing takeaways as a musician that I learned after the tour. Um, the first is about when you're in a group collaborating. And I think basically if someone says a crazy idea, you as a human have two choices to react. The first is you can say, that's a ridiculous idea. I'm gonna go on my lunch break while you think about that. You're crazy, you know? Or you could say, huh, interesting. Okay, and what if blah, 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 and you contribute. And the thing is that even if the original idea that the person said is not the one that you're gonna go with or that you think is the right idea, by encouraging it and uplifting it and then building on it, you basically are contributing together to the creative process of getting to the actual thing that you'll do. So one example is Maya during the tour, during the song Bring the Noise, she there has this one sound in the, uh, in the song that's similar to the sound of a marble dropping. It sounds and I was trying, I remember, to map that onto organic drums. So I was trying to play it on the side of a drum, I was trying to play it on the snare, and we just couldn't get it right. She hated all the sounds. And that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. And then she was like, what if we actually got a marble on a table and recorded it? And I was like, oh my God, okay, let's try that. Two of the people who were in that conversation, they left. They're like, this is ridiculous, we're never gonna do it, it sounds not really gonna capture it. I remember I went on a wild goose hunt around the city trying to find abandoned furniture to get that table sound that we wanted. And I found a slab on the side of the street that we were in Montreal for the rehearsals. And I brought it in and I put it on a snare stand. So it was like a slab of top of a wood, put it on a snare stand and then bought some marbles and we started dropping them on the table and it was the perfect sound. So that's the first lesson is that when you're working in a group, there's no no. You really want to try to encourage each other so that everyone says their crazy ideas and together you refine it until you get to the answer. And if you've ever seen the live show, you'll see that on Bring the Noise, I'm literally dropping marbles mic'd on a table. It's really cool. I would say the second amazing thing that I learned, specifically working with Maya, was that she always would say to me, get into the rhythm of the song. Get into the rhythm of the song. And I was like, I'm a drummer. I, like That's what I do is get into the rhythm of the song. What do you mean? And I learned slowly that she means that in the song when I'm listening and trying to create the drum part that I want on the organic drums, there's not only the drum part to listen to, you have to listen to the cadence of the other electronic sounds and you have to listen to her voice because she uses her rap and her hip hop and her lyrics in a very specific way that actually is percussive in and of itself. And so she taught me two things. One is to listen to each of those components in isolation. And then secondly, to listen to them as like a percussive whole, especially because of her music. It's so percussion and like rhythm heavy. And that was really amazing for me as a drummer because then what I would do is instead of playing exactly the drum part in the song on my drums, I got a little bit more creative because I was like, well, the audience perceives it as a mix of these are four or five, 10, 20 different sounds. What makes sense for me to layer on top of that so it's more holistic? Could you please tell me about what projects you're working on right now and maybe what is success in your vision? Absolutely. Um, Right now, you know, as a musician, and you know, you go to Berkeley, so you must see this all the time, I always think of two modes. You're either in tour mode, where you're out and you're doing your thing, you're playing and you're killing it, and you're basically putting everything that you've learned to work. And then there's practice mode, when you're not out and you're trying to get better at your craft. And one of the best things my teacher, Chris Bryan, who's actually based in Hong Kong now, what he taught me was, don't practice while you play and don't play while you practice. So when you're out and you're touring, perform. You're in execution mode. It needs to be crisp, on point, deliver what you know. Deliver the stuff that you're solid at. But when you're practicing, don't go off and just play the stuff you know because that's in the past. You got it. You got to push yourself forward. 
And so right now, since MIA is not on tour, I use a lot of my free time to practice the things that I've always wanted to get better at. So for example, um, there's a lot of New Orleans rhythms that I've been trying to improve on, just gotta get that swing. One thing that's really unique about New Orleans rhythms is how it, the, the breaks usually end on the four. So you know, and I've been trying to figure out like how do you keep that feel while still doing experimental things. Another example is I was in Brazil. Uh, in January and I've been learning Portuguese actually because I wanted to make sure my trip was super immersive I guess and when I came back there was one rhythm that I remember very specifically called EJ Shah and it's a mix of a lot of the slave influence when they came from Africa um, in the northeast part of Brazil in the Bahia state and in Salvador um, when they invented this religion uh, called Candomblé and Candomblé is a syncretic religion that's a mix between uh, Catholic Catholicism and then also uh, like African uh, religions. This rhythm called Ije Shah came about and it's where you play it on both the agogo bells and the, the uh, congas and it's da da dum da so I've been practicing that as well. Um, those are, I would say, the best like projects that I have going on right now is just my own practice. Another thing that is really interesting about um, music and energies and vibes and all that kind of stuff is frequencies. Mm -hmm. And you've already mentioned about frequencies, which is like waveforms and everything. So what is your frequency? My frequency? Um, you know what? My frequency is atomic living. Um, I always think about my happiest times, like when I'm doing things that like make me really energized. And I think about atoms, like a little atom bouncing around, you know, with tons of energy. And, you know, if you look at atomic movement, it's at random because basically atoms get energized and then they collide with each other and then they're sent off in any sort of coordinate in space. And my favorite times are when basically I know exactly the things that matter to me, such as um, music, innovation, gender equality, let's say like those three things. And then I live my day spontaneously in that I'll run into someone and they might say, hey, there's a show later tonight, do you want to come? And I could say, oh, no, 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 I have plans, and that's not in the books, you know? Or I can say, do I think that will nurture any one of those three things? And because it nurtures the music, for example, I always say yes. So in that moment, two of us collided and then she sent me in a different direction, which is now to go see this show. And then when I'm at the show, uh, you know, I might notice that like, at that place, it was a bunch of women who were playing music and inspiring me in a way that I couldn't have imagined. So then I take what I learned from that show and maybe go to my studio that night and practice the rhythm that I saw on the drums. Um, so my frequency is about being a little atom full of energy who knows what her missions are and uses um, spontaneity to energize and move her forward. That's a great frequency to have and a great explanation about atoms and everything. Thank you for um, coming to My Frequency today. Thank you for sharing all the stories. Um, I had a very good time with you, and I hope to, su to see you soon again on My Frequency. Amazing. Thank you so much, Dania. Thank you for having me. Thank you.